The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have released their most explosive trailer yet, in which Meghan accuses the palace of making her a scapegoat in the British press to take attention away from other members of the royal family. There was a real kind of war against Meghan, and I've certainly seen evidence that there was negative briefing from the palace against Harry and Meghan to suit other people's agendas. Meg became this scapegoat for the palace, and so they would feed stories on her, whether they were true or not, to avoid other less favorable stories being printed. You would just see it play out. It's like a story about someone in the family would pop up for a minute, and they go, we gotta make that go away. But there's real estate on a website homepage. There is real estate there on a newspaper front cover, and something has to be filled in there about someone royal. Well, joining me now is somebody who will know absolutely everything about how this works, if indeed it does work like that. And that is the former royal editor of The Sun, Charlie Ray. Hello, Charlie. So glad to have you on the programme. All right, well, it's very clear. Megan is saying something very specific here. She's saying that a story that is um, hostile to or depicts other members of the royal family in a way that they don't like, as she puts it, pops up and she says it has to be replaced by another royal story and that Buckingham Palace was feeding horrible stories about her to the press to get other unfavourable stories about other members of the royal family taken out of the press. Now, you would know whether that's the way it works or not, is it? Well, I can assure you it does not work. <laughs> it does not work like that, uh, Vanessa. I mean, when she says it pops up, if you've got a story in the newspaper, it doesn't pop Puff. It's there. The edition is printed and it's distributed around the country. You can't pull all the copies back and say, oh, I'm sorry, we don't want that picture of some royal. We we're going to shove uh, a, a, an unflattering story about Meghan on the front. It's, it's, it's impossible. If she's talking about the Internet and some of the websites that uh, print, print things, well, it stays on the website. It doesn't disappear. It's in fact, it's on the website forever and a day. This is an astonishing piece of propaganda uh, by Meghan and her and her people on this. It's the worst um, of the of the trailers that we have seen. And I, her lawyer, uh, Jenny Afia, uh, came out with a great quote about the, she has seen the evidence of this happening. Fantastic. I'll look forward to looking at these three programs tomorrow and looking at the evidence because she's a lawyer and she knows what evidence is. So let's see the evidence. Let's see which royal she is talking about that a story was pulled in favour of doing a defamatory story about Meghan. Is she talking about Prince Andrew? Well, he's had a bucket load um, over the allegations against him. Other members of the royal family, too, have also uh, been, been criticised. But Meghan is... She, she seems to forget that she was subject to a bullying investigation, uh, which uh, is still lying somewhere in the palace. The result of it still lying somewhere. And the Queen, the late Queen, decided it shouldn't be published because she thought it would only add fuel to the fire. Now, the reason that we found out, uh, that newspapers found out about the bullying is because there were so many people who had left her employ over a, a very short period of time that she was becoming to be dubbed Princess P45. And we as journalists are entitled to ask people why they left and get information. And that's why that story cropped up. Let, let me ask you then, let's, let's go carefully through what Meghan says. She says a story that is hostile or unpleasant about another member of the royal family, she puts it, pops up. Now, where and how does a story, as she puts it, pop up? Does she mean on social media? Because she can't exactly. mean in the press. Because if it pops no. up in the press, it's already in the press. So it can't be replaced by a story about her. So where is she implying that these hostile stories about other members of the royal family pop up? Where? I think what she's saying, Vanessa, yes. is that uh, we may have a story about uh, another member of the royal family. And we would go to the press office and say, hello, have you got any comment? Because we're going to be writing this story about so-and-so. And, -so. and they're, they're, what she seems to be suggesting is the, the press office were thinking, oh, my God, we can't have that out. Hang on a second. Why don't you do a story about Megan and 
uh, something something else. Oh, okay then. It doesn't work like that. We do not give away stories. If we have got a story about anybody, we will put it in the paper. And uh, my colleagues who work on the various websites will put it on the website. There is no, there is no uh, exchange of 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 stories to to try and keep something out of the papers instead of putting something uh, against Megan. I think that's what she's talking about. You see, Megan gets herself in twists and confused. Uh, about the the way the way it works, and it certainly doesn't work this way. Um, I have heard over my career as a journalist yeah. of occasions when, for example, very well known people have employed, let's say, a PR company or a PR sure. agent on an annual basis at, at a pretty large fee. And when you ask people, well, why do you do that? What is that company supposed to do for you? The reply is, well to keep nasty stories about me out of the papers and replace them either with good stories about me or other stories about other people so that the nasty stories about me don't make it onto the front page or don't make it into the paper. I have heard this personally sure. on no, no, quite, no, no, a few, no. quite a few occasions. Um, I'm not going to name any names, but I bet you know who I'm talking about. Very well-known sure. people who retain people to keep stories about them out and possibly trade other stories about other people and put them in. Now, if I've heard that happen, happening in the sort of celebrity world, which is where I've heard of it. I haven't heard of it in the political world, but for all I know it goes on there, I don't know. But personally, I've heard of it in the celebrity world. It makes it seem less ridiculous and a bit less remarkable that Meghan might suggest that it could happen in the world of the royal family. But maybe you're going to tell me, Charlie, because I've never been a royal editor and you have, maybe you're going to tell me it's different where the royal family is concerned. Yeah, it, it, well, I like you have heard these sort of stories that people employ various PR companies to to you know keep their 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 target as lily white as possible. Well, basically, they've failed quite a lot, uh, Vanessa, as you as you well know that when you look at the celebrity world, there's an awful lot of stories come out about various celebrities who end up as bad boys and bad girls. Now, going back to uh, going back to Megan. Um, I'm sorry, you, you mentioned something about um, an association between Megan and, and the press, did yes. you? I, I, um, yes. Sorry, go on. Well, I was just asking that if celebrities can do it, or at least can try and do it, could it be said that there might be, for example, you know, people representing William and Kate's camp who would say, well, actually, look, at look, funnily enough, you know, Megan did this yesterday. That's what she's saying they did. And I, you're, you're I, saying I, no. No, I'm saying definitely, definitely not. You see, the, the the trouble with being a royal reporter is you cannot ring up the monarch or the Prince of Wales or the Princess of Wales and say, look, I'm doing a story about uh, you doing X, Y, Z. They don't, they, they will not, you can't just get through. You've got to go through various people. And so that means they've got to go through their press office or the, the now fa fantastically called communications department to put any allegations, whatever, to them. Now, they've got to answer those allegations, and it's not good enough for any of them to say it. Certainly, it certainly never worked in my day, and I can't believe it works now with the Royal Reporters today. You certainly can't say, I've got this story about you, but if you give me something about Meghan or Harry, we'll not bother with that. It, doesn't, it just does not work like that. OK, I'm going to throw a phrase at you that Meghan uses in the trailer. We heard sure. it yesterday. She said, they didn't just throw me to the wolves, they fed me to the wolves. Everyone wanted to know what that meant. Yeah. If anyone's going to know it's you, I think you might even be one of the wolves. Um, well, Charlie, I'm, what, what does I'm, she mean? It may, I may well have been one of, one of the wolves, but Vanessa, what we don't know is the, the key word is they. Who is they? Do they mean they, the palace? Because the, 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 the phrases are both used. It's been changed to the press fed me to the wolves mm -hmm. or they, the meaning the palace fed me to the wolves. So we don't even know who is supposed to have fed her to the wolves. It's patently ludicrous. She lives in a cuckoo world. She lives in some sort of, of you know, other planet. I'm, I'm sorry to say this about her, and I don't know where she's getting all this, but as I say, her own lawyer says she's seen this evidence. Fantastic. Let me see it, and I'm happy to say I'm wrong when I see this evidence that shows a particular story about a particular royal was not used in return for a defamatory or bad story about Meghan. 
I look forward to it. And, and final question, do you get handed stories or do you actually have investigative <laughs> journalists who go out and find stories, plus contacts and networks, to find stories? Or are you just handed stories by the palace who say, here's a story, I've, I've... put this in? I wish it was that easy for this. <laughs> we just stood there and people would form a queue and sort of, you sort of say, like, next, come on, give us this story. Now, you know, Vanessa, you've been a journalist. Uh, nobody. The only thing about the royals is there are official jo jobs that they do, official um, occasions that they take part in, and they tell us about those official occasions, like the opening of a museum or the, the visit to a foreign country. But they don't, they don't hand out and say, we've got a juicy one here for you. This is a corker. No, 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 no. Journalism is about setting up a number of contacts uh, all around. And if you know people who work at the palace in some function or other, and you can talk to them, uh, not bribe them, I'm not suggesting that at all, but you can talk to them and they, you have a good relationship with them, then you will get stories. It's that simple. And that works in other fields, fears as well, you know, education, uh, crime, everything else. You need contacts to help you get your stories. Charlie Ray, thank you very much indeed. Pleasure.